Welcome to our summer symposium, Growing Through Challenges. I am Dr. Sandra Scheinbaum, founder and CEO of the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy, a proud collaboration with the Institute for Functional Medicine, IFM. Over the past year, we've seen more people becoming concerned about their health than ever before. But we have a problem. There's often a gap between what they know they should do to be healthy and actually doing it. So enter the functional medicine health coach who has a calling to help people lead healthier lives and an expert in behavior change. The process of coaching itself leads not only to a very fulfilling career that's filled with joy, but personal transformation. We also are hearing that transformation takes place for those medical doctors and organizations who are hiring health coaches. Well, how do coaches actually help people to change? It starts with being fully present with another individual and listening. And what they typically hear are stories about adversity, physical illness, emotional trauma, challenges. And coaches help people see these challenges through a different lens where the challenges themselves become opportunities that can result in thriving. So in other words, it's growth because of adversity, not despite adversity. We all have the capacity for resilience and growth, but often we don't see it. And that's why the functional medicine health coach is the ally who helps people harness their strengths that they can utilize for growth and resilience. Strengths like creativity and curiosity, love of learning, the capacity for hope and gratitude, the ability to love, find meaning and purpose. And that meaning and purpose typically comes through community. My meaning and purpose is very strongly tied to this functional medicine FMCA community. Our students, our graduates, our team, faculty, and the greater functional medicine community through IFM. And when you come to this strong functional medicine community, it feels like you've come home to people who get you, you feel like you belong, and it's for life. So for those of you who are new to our community, welcome, and invite you to stay until the end of this event because we have a special announcement. This event is an opportunity for us to come together from around the world and recognize our collective strengths and our common mission to reduce the suffering from the chronic illnesses that are so many. It's one of many gatherings to come remote and hopefully at some point live. And now I want to introduce Jim Quick. That's his real name, and he is the widely recognized number one world expert in memory improvement, brain optimization, and accelerated learning. After a childhood brain injury left him learning challenged, he created strategies to dramatically enhance his mental performance. He has since dedicated his life to helping others unleash their true genius and brain power. Jim is host of the top education training podcast, Quick Brain, an instant New York Times bestselling author of Limitless. Upgrade your brain, learn anything faster, unlock your exceptional life. His mission, no brain left behind. He's on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine. 
He also happens to be an FMCA educator and my personal friend. Welcome, Jim. Dr. Sandy, thank you so much uh, for having me and, and congratulations for everybody who's on this journey along with us. You know, I fully believe that, um, that you are the greatest project you're ever going to get to work on. And it's important to take time and make time to create magic. And that, that's what we're doing here in this session. Um, in the time that I have with you, I want to share with you six things. This conversation is about overcoming adversity and turning adversity into an advantage, uh, meaning that I believe that these difficult times, they could define us. These difficult times can diminish us or these difficult times can develop us. Ultimately, we decide. And so I'm going to share with you six choices, decisions that we can make uh, for ourselves, uh, for be able to support our clients, to help them get to where they are, to where they where they desire and they deserve to be. And um, and I'm really excited about having this conversation now more than ever because you know we live in interesting times. So if you're struggling right now, um, my my heart and my prayers go out to you. You know, you inspire people with your grit and your grace and you're needed now more than ever. Um, I believe that those in, in the area of wellness are modern day superheroes. And that's why I thank you for your passion and your purpose around this. Um, passion for me is what lights you up. Purpose is how you take that passion, light other people up. And so maybe your passion is health and that lights you up and teaching people and coaching them about health and wellness is your purpose because that's what lights other people. Uh, for me, I'm passionate about brain health. And the reason why is um, I grew up with uh, three traumatic brain injuries before the age of 12, and that led to some pretty challenging times. You know, this is about conversation about a real and raw conversation about uh, overcoming challenges. Um, it led to some severe learning challenges. And so I had very poor focus. I had a very um, <laughs> challenged memory. It took me three years longer to learn how to read. I had my accident when I was five years old. Um, I remember... I was slowing down an entire class and I was being teased for it. And a teacher pointed to me in front of the whole class and said, that's the boy with the broken brain. And so those were definitely some challenging times. Um, it's, it's interesting that I think that our struggles when we overcome them can actually become strengths. And so let me go into uh, what I believe are, are six things that you could do to come out of this stronger, because that's the one thing that unites us all, right? we're going through, you go through adversity. And, and, and it's challenging, you know, with, without a doubt, you know, because my growth journey and that label of boy with a broken brain, I was not only a slow learner, but I was paralyzed when it came to public speaking, you know, uh, the fear, the thought of just speaking in front of a group of people, um, just it put me into a panic. And uh, I don't know if anyone here could relate to that. You know, it's interesting that learning and public speaking were my two biggest challenges and uh, the universe has a sense of humor because what do I do every day? I public speak on this thing called called learning, and um, you know, and, and as a as a brain coach, which is interesting. Sandy mentioned uh, Entrepreneur Magazine. This is a, the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine this month. So if you go to newsstand, there's this eight page article called Upgrade Your Brain, and um, and I'm showing you this not because of the person who happens to be on <laughs> the cover, but who's holding a brain. But it's interesting that mainstream media is. Um, uh, it's great that they're covering uh, mental fitness and brain health in, in the workplace. Um, my book, Limitless, who most of you know, the, who wrote the forward is uh, Dr. Mark Hyman, you know, functional medicine doctor also as well. Yeah, it's, it, it was the number one book, nonfiction book of the first week of Amazon in, in, in all nonfiction. It overtook Obama's book. And the reason why I bring this up is because this is a conversation that needs to be had. And, uh, you know, how do you become limitless in a limited world when people feel beat up, when we have turbulent times, when, you know, people are confused and, 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 and they, they have doubts and they have fears and these are challenges. So the, the metaphor that I use uh, for myself uh, to get through this uh, for our family and uh, also with clients is that of a butterfly. And it's interesting because while the beauty is in the butterfly, the growth happens where? The growth happens in the cocoon. And it's that 
creature's willingness and determination to be able to emerge out of that cocoon that it develops strength to uh, to be able to to be able to fly to be able to soar at, at to new heights and so i want to i want to ask you to welcome during this conversation the symbol of transformation uh, because we go through cycles right and it feels like we work cocooning for the longest times and when we're cocooning we're alone with our thoughts where your clients are alone with their thoughts they're alone with they're alone with their fears they're alone with their doubts they might be feeling alone and loneliness is an epidemic as you know the, as mental health challenges they soar and part of the challenges is we cling to a world that was rather than progressing rather than continuing through the cycle, right? And in Limitless, I have a quote that says, life is the C between B and D. Life is C between B and D. What does that stand for? B stands for birth. D stands for death. C, life, choice, choice. That we are the sum total of all the choices we've made up to this point, right? We as a society are the sum total of all the choices we've made up to this point, you know. And as I mentioned, that these difficult times they could diminish us, they could they could define us, or they could develop us. We decide. We always have that choice. So here are quickly our six choices. I would encourage you to reflect on uh, family members and also your your coaching clients. Okay, I'm going to make them really easy to remember. I tend to alliterate everything. Uh, and use a lot of acronyms. I'm going to use the letter C in this case. So six C's to come and emerge out of this cocoon and to be able to soar, right? And in, in, in the face of adversity. So the first C is clarity. I believe clarity is a superpower for sure. A lot of us, when we're going 100 miles an hour, very rarely check in with ourselves and say, am I going in the right direction? And there's two clarifying questions I'll encourage you to ask and reflect of yourself and also your loved ones, and certainly also your, your patients or your, co your coaching clients. The first one is this, what's most important to me in life? Or what's most important to me in a career? What's more, or you could ask somebody else, what's most important to you in life? What's most important to you in a relationship? What's most important to you in health? And then once you have those values, you know, I find that how many of you feel like you are burnt out after the past 14 months, you feel exhausted. And sometimes you feel like you're burnt out because you're doing too much, right? It's been my experience and I've been teaching this now. I'm, I've been a coach for 30 years. I'm starting my 30th year. Um, it's a real mission. My mission is to build better, brighter brains because I know what it feels like to have a broken brain. And uh, no brain left behind is, is, our, is our mission. So we do that with our videos. I know many of you listen to our podcast, tens of millions of, of, of downloads um, through our books, through our programs, through our individual coaching that, I, that we do. And it, it's, it's interesting because part of us being feeling burnt out is not because we're doing too much. Sometimes we feel burnt out because we're doing too little of the things that light us up right? The things that we value most. And sometimes that's our, our clients also as well. They feel burnt out or exhausted, not because they're doing too much. Maybe it's because they're doing too little of the things that they hold dear, the things that they treasure. So first ask, what's most important to me or them in, in life? The second question though, is just as important. Once you have that answer, ask yourself, are my actions are my actions I'm taking today aligned with those values? Are, am, I, am I getting closer to those values? Um, because you don't want to climb the ladder of success and be very efficient and busy just to get to the top and realize the ladder is leaning on the wrong wall, right? And so that's not the goal. The most important thing is to keep the most important things the most important things. I'll say that again. It's not about just time management. Yes, it's great to be able to, the things we teach, to be able to read faster, to be able to remember more, to be able to remember facts and figures and foreign language, but also part of it is prioritizing the things that, that you hold dear. So the most important things to keep the most important things, the most important things. And so get clarity, ask yourself, what's most important to me? And because sometimes when we have this pause, it's a great time to check in, you know, I, you know, isolation is a wonderful time. Solitude is a wonderful time for self-reflection. And then ask yourself, are my actions aligned with those things? So that's clarity. The second C I would suggest is care. Now, you know, because you're, you have a passion for health and wellness, that self-care is not selfish, right? And I would say self-love is, is not selfish 
either. And I just want to remind you that you have permission to rest. You are not responsible for fixing everything that is broken. You do not have to try and make everyone happy. Remember to take time for you, time to recover, time to replenish, time to rest. And so we talk a lot in our programs and our podcasts and our books about self-care, the best brain foods, how to reduce negative self-talk, the best exercises for your mind. And I, I focus a lot on the mind because I think we're in the millennium of the mind. Nobody here, it's not like it was 100 years ago. You're not, you're not compensated for your brute strength. Today, it's your brain strength. It's not your muscle power. Today, it is surely your mind power. And the faster you can learn, the faster you can earn. So how are you caring for your brain? You know, one of the questions I ask myself all the time is this, is this good for my brain or is this bad for my brain? And is this food good for my brain or bad for my brain? Are these thoughts good for my brain or bad for my brain? Are these people good for my brain or bad for my brain? Are this, is this show I'm watching, et cetera, right? To have some kind of filter system. You know, how, how are you prioritizing your sleep? right? That has a big effect on the brain. How are you managing stress? Because chronic stress has been shown to shrink the human brain, right? If you're always creating cortisol and adrenaline, you're in fight or flight or freeze, you're not going to live your best life. You're not going to be there as well as you can be for, present for your family, uh, present for your clients or patients. And so sometimes part of self-care is when you say yes to somebody or something, make sure you're not saying no to who to yourself. Part of self-care, it's just, let's get really real here, is saying, putting borders and boundaries around the things that are important to you, your energy, your emotions, your mood, right? Your time. All right. So just remind yourself, you know, how are you prioritizing your care? And these are small little choices. Again, going back to six choices. First, clarity, reflecting. Second, what are the choices you're making for care? The third C I would offer everybody for you and your clients, your family is contribution. You know, we talked about chronic stress shrinking the human brain. Chronic fear actually suppresses the, the, the immune system, right? A whole area of science called psychoneuroimmunology. And so it makes you more susceptible to colds, to flus, to viruses. And, and it, part of it is also, you have an algorithm to your mind. Did you know that? So it's like an algorithm on Instagram. I know uh, we might be connected on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, whatever you engage with, that algorithm gives you more of. If you engage with uh, all the cat posts, you like and share, uh, comment on all the cat posts, you watch all the cat videos on Instagram, what do they do? They give you more cats, right? Whatever you engage with, the algorithm gives you more of. Well, your mind has a similar algorithm. Whatever you're constantly engaged with, they show you more of because primarily your brain is a deletion device. It's trying to keep information out. And what does it let in? It lets in the things that you that are important to you right? The things that you, you connect with. And so a lot of your clients, they're glued to the, to the news, to social media, to if it bleeds, it leads, and, you know, because the part of your brain, right? The amygdala it gets hijacked by the things that are threatening, the things that are dark, the things that are scary, because that's your survival. And the challenge is it'll show you more of that, right? That yeah, part of your brain called the reticular activating system, the RAS, you know, what you are presently aware of. It'll give you more of that, just like the cats and Instagram. And so that challenges, it leaves you little bandwidth to focus on what? On possibility, on positivity, on opportunity, on the things you can be grateful for. So the antidote, I think, to fear, chronic fear, is not only gratitude. And by the way, gratitude, we did a whole Thanksgiving episode on how gratitude rewires your brain. Um, in our show, it's, there's no sponsors. It's only 15 minutes long. So it's, it's most binge listened and, you know, uh, on YouTube and Spotify. But the reason I bring this up is because um, when you're engaging with certain uh, content and they show you more more of this content, it leaves you very little uh, bandwidth. And when it comes to gratitude, you do not have to wait for a greater life to feel grateful. Feel grateful and you'll have a greater life, right? What you appreciate, appreciates. And so that's an antidote to, to fear. But the other one is contribution. I, I mentioned I had a fear of public speaking and 
part of what gets me to see in a normal year over a quarter million people in total in live events, I could be on three continents in one week, is my service for others, right? I, I get nervous, I get the butterflies, speaking of butterflies before going on stage, but I focus on how I could be able to support that person in an audience. And so ask yourself, how can you invest some of your time, your talent, your treasure to make a difference? Because that contribution gets you out of that fear, right? And I think that that's what we do. We learn to earn to return. For, for our book, Limitless, um, many of you who wrote, read the book, I want to thank you because we donated 100% of the proceeds to charity, to Alzheimer's research for women, uh, because women are twice as likely to experience Alzheimer's than men. Um, yet a lot of the research is done on male brains and treatments, male brains. Um, this is a memory of my grandmother who I lost. I had my brain accident when I was five years old and I lost my grandmother to Alzheimer's when I was seven. So it was something that's just, that was a very pivotal time for me. You know, I think everybody, when we're talking about adversity, your mess could become your message. What was my mess? Learning challenges, uh, brain health, you know, challenges in the family. So I became an advocate for education and, and, and brain health, right? And so th it's interesting how those challenges could lead to change. So contribution, how can you invest some of your time, your talent, your treasure to, to make a difference? And also your clients to help them get out of fear and loneliness to connect with others. The fourth C, and I'll go through the rest fast. The fourth C is creativity. What a wonderful time right now to, is, is the future belongs to the creators, you know, where things are being outsourced to machines that are being automated more and more going to artificial intelligence. What's not going to be as easily outsourced are the things that Dr. Sandy talked about that are truly limitless. You know, when we're talking about what's really limitless in the world, the things that she opened with in her in amazing intro is like creativity. There's no limit to your creativity. There's no limit to our vision of the world. There's no limit to hope. There's no limit to our depth of connection. There's no limit to our ability to solve problems, right? And so that's what's not going to be easy outsourced to a, a machine. And the future belongs to the creatives, right? Our ability to solve our clients' problems, to be there consistently for them. Here's the thing though, did you know it was during the, the, great, the plague, the great plague when then William Shakespeare created his big, a lot of his masterpieces, Macbeth, Anthony and Cleopatra during the plague, right? Did you know it was uh, when they shut down London because of the plague that Isaac Newton had to physically distance himself and he had to be at home, can't be in school and he was sitting underneath the tree and what happened? Uh, that apple fell on his head and he created the theories of motion. He created the theories of gravity, right? And so what can you and your clients do during this time to, to create? What's something you've always wanted to create? Um, you want to be able to write. You have a passion for music. You want to create, a, you're, an, you're an entrepreneur. You want to create a, a, a new business or a solution for, for something or an online program, right? A funnel, whatever that happens to be. So how can you be more creative and make time for that? That's a choice. Creativity is a choice. And then, and then finally, I'll give you five and six. Fifth is capability capability, meaning you have a to-do list and I'm sure it's a hundred or 200 plus things long. Do you have a to learn list? You know, during this, the challenging times is a wonderful time to be able to learn because you have unfettered access to the world's information. You know, you have more information on your access with your phone today than, than President Clinton did back when he was in office, right? You have more computing power in, in, your, in your pocket and, you, you know, podcasts and YouTube, um, online programs. You can learn salsa. <laughs> you can learn uh, speed reading. You can learn Spanish, right? Everything is there. So what's on your to learn list? And I would say one thing that needs to be on your to learn list. Well, let me ask you a question. If there was a genie could grant you any one wish, but only one wish, what would you wish for? Limitless wishes, right? You would ask for millions of wishes. Well, if I was your learning genie and I could grant you one learning wish to help you become a master or an expert at any one subject, what would you choose? You know, would you choose coding or leadership or, or, or sales or what would you choose? Learning how to what? Learn. Because if you can learn how to learn, you can learn how to focus and concentrate and read faster and retain information and apply it. You could apply that towards anything, right? You apply it to medicine, money, marketing, management, martial arts, Mandarin, music, everything in your life gets exponentially easier, right? Yet, isn't it interesting that school taught us what to learn, math, history, science, Spanish, but there were zero classes on how to learn, how to focus and concentrate 
how to read and understand, how to remember things, right? I, they teach you three R's in school, reading, writing, you know, arithmetic, obviously spelling wasn't one of them, but what about retention? What about recall? Socrates says, learning is remembering. And so capabilities, what have you always wanted to be able to learn? And I would say learning how to learn should be on that also, that list. And then finally, um, in the spirit of, you know, this, this symposium, the sixth one I would say is community. You know, it's, we, we need as human beings, one of the big drives that we all have is connection, right? Human connection. And it's not just when we're talking about, I do a lot on brain health and brain optimization. It's not just your neurological networks or your biological networks. A lot of it has to do with our social networks. Please write this down if you, and you know this. And part of what a coach does, what you do for clients is maybe not everything is brand new to them. It's just reminding them of what, what's important, what they're doing, when they're doing, when they're great, right? And um, part of it is just reminding you that who you spend time with is who you become, right? If you spend time with five uh, broke people, you're going to be number six, right? Because, and the reason why you you appreciate this, we have these mirror neurons, right? In our nervous system. And that allows us to have empathy. If you're watching sports or television show and you could feel what the character is feeling, you know, that's our nervous system lighting up because we tend to imitate the things that are around us. That's why you tend to look like your significant other over time or your pet, right? Yeah. We, we, I always tell people, to watch W A T C H. You can write that down. W A T C H. We start to imitate the W stands for words of the people around us. The A are the actions. <laughs> we start having the same behaviors as people around us. The T are the thoughts and the self-talk, right? The C is character. And that's certainly, you know, when you spend time with people of high levels of character, you tend to, to, to lean into those values also. And then finally, the H and watch are your habits. First, you create your habits, then your habits create you. You know, if you want a great video to watch, millions of people have shared, have shared and watched this, just search my name, morning routine, and the 10 things I do every morning to jumpstart my brain. It don't take a lot of time that you can do with your kids, a simple things to get present, to activate your brain. But first you create your habits, your habits of meditation, your habits of eating the best brain food, your habits of max optimizing and prioritizing your sleep, you know, hygiene. And then all of a sudden those habits create you back. But when I talk about community, it's so very important when I talk about social networks. It's not like just your history in terms of, you know, whether you smoke. It's it's like if your friends' friends smoke, it's going to have a bigger lean on 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 your on your habits and what you're going to do regularly. So that's why we talk all about a positive peer group so much, and that's why it's so important to have a positive peer group that people to encourage you, people to challenge you, people to cheerlead for you, people to teach you. If you haven't found that person yet then be that person for somebody else, right? Especially be that person for who? Be that person for you, right? You know, if you haven't found that person yet, just F, you'll go to FMCA, right? You know, you have your functional medicine coaching academy. You could find your peers that are on the same, on the same path as you are, right? Because this is what I believe is that we shouldn't be downgrading our dreams to meet this current situation, don't downgrade your dreams. Uh, don't let your clients downgrade their dreams to meet this current situation. Instead, let's upgrade our mindset. Let's upgrade our motivation. Let's upgrade the methods that we're using to, to hit those bold, audacious dreams. The human spirit and certainly the mind, it, it, it thrives on thinking big, right? Having vision for ourselves. And we hear a lot about post-traumatic stress, you know, and, and it, you know, it's challenging, right? You never know who's struggling, right? You could pass somebody on the street and they could be fighting the battle of their lives. That's why kindness is so, is so very, very important. But we don't hear a lot about post-traumatic growth. Post-traumatic growth, and, I, and, I, and I'm sure some of you experience this. You've gone through adversity. You've gone through difficulty that you wouldn't wish upon another human being. And, and part of you knows deep down, you wouldn't change that. That going through it, you found something. You discovered a, a value, a, a mission. You found, you discovered a strength you never thought you had, right? Or maybe even a purpose. Maybe that's why you're on this path. For me, I struggled for a decade and a half. You know, I've been teaching this for 30 years and I was struggling, struggling, struggling. And I finally had this breakthrough and I learned these, these tools, these techniques, these knowledge, skills, and abilities. And I couldn't help but help other people. 
And I started to tutor when I was 18 years old. And one of my first students, she was a freshman in college. She read 30 books in 30 days. Can you imagine that? Not, not skimmer scan. How many of you are really good at buying books and they sit on your shelf? And they become shelf help, not self help, right? And uh, that's why we like get people reading three times faster and getting people reading a book a week. But she read 30 books in 30 days. And I wanted to find out not how. I know I taught I taught her how. Um, actually, if you want to learn how, we have a link in our Instagram that actually a free masterclass for absolutely free. Bring a book. I'll show you how to double your reading speed and better focus. But she she retained it. She understood it. I wanted to find out why. And it was her mother. Her mother was dying of terminal cancer and was given just 60 days by doctors, two months to live. And I, I wished her luck and the, because the books she was reading were books to save her mom's life. I wished her luck and prayers. Six months goes by, I don't hear from this young lady. And one day I get a call and she's crying, 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 crying hysterically. And when she stops, I find out their tears of joy that her mother not only survived, but is really getting better. Doctors don't know how, they don't know why. The doctors were calling it a miracle, but her mother attributed 100% to the great advice she got from who? From her daughter, who learned it from where? From all these books. And in that moment, I realized that if knowledge is power, then learning is our superpower. That if knowledge is power, learning is your superpower. It's your client's superpowers, your patient's superpowers. You know, it's a power that we all have. It's just, we weren't shown how to be able to access it right? Your brain is this most amazing technology. We upgrade our phones, our apps, our computers more than we upgrade this technology that creates it all. So we live in the millennium of the mind and the mind is the ultimate adaptation machine. So I want to just congratulate you because if you're watching this, you've self-selected saying, I want more, right? And that you know that there's more inside of you. I believe that your life is like an egg, that if an egg is broken by an outside force, life ends. But if it's broken by an inside force, life begins. Great things begin on the inside. And if you're here watching this, then you have obviously have greatness inside of you. You have genius inside of you. And now is the time to let that out. So I'm your brain coach, Jim Quick. It's a real honor to be here. I want to thank everybody who's produced this and just thank you for the journey that you're on. And again, I believe that there's a version of ourselves that we haven't met yet. And there's a version of your clients that you haven't met yet. And the goal is to keep showing up every single day until you're introduced. Jim, thank you for sharing your personal journey and your wisdom. That was absolutely amazing. And now I would like to introduce Elise Wagner, our co-founder and chief wellness officer who is going to introduce our Global Coach Forum. Thank you, Sandy. We have a panel of FMCA grads who are here to speak about their experience as health coaches with a global perspective. I would like to introduce Dr. Christy Hughes of the U.S., who's dedicated her professional path to the study and practice of root cause medicine. She's the owner of Doser Vita Naturopathic and Functional Medicine Healthcare Consultations, Telemedicine, and lifestyle coaching services. She's the former director of medical education at IFM. She's an original advisory board member at FMCA, a graduate from FMCA class of 2021, and a graduate from the National College of Natural Medicine. Leora Mosovitz of the UK is a functional medicine certified health coach. She's a skilled group facilitator and brings leaders in the well being world together to deliver a shared appointment model with transformational results. She's had a successful career working for a global nutraceutical brand and is skilled in functional medicine, practitioner business development, values based sales training, and public speaking. Mohammed Mustafa of Middle East and North Africa region is a functional medicine certified health coach. He's the founder of Fit Raw Wellbeing and the world's first functional medicine weight loss coach dedicated to helping busy working individuals lose fat, sleep deeply, feel happy, and develop a deeper spiritual connection. Today's moderator is Monique Klass, a founding member 
and senior content developer and lead faculty for the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy. She's a senior faculty member for IFM and the Center for Mind-Body Medicine. She's also a clinical instructor for Yale Graduate School of Nursing. Monique is a board-certified family nurse practitioner and a clinical nurse specialist in holistic health. She also holds certifications from the American Holistic Nurses Credentialing Co Cooperation and the National Board for Health and Wellness Coaching. Thank you for joining us. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm so thrilled to be here with all of you. And Christy, I haven't seen you in a while, my dear friend and colleague. So this is such a treat because we have such a diverse, there's such a wide range of what you guys are doing as coaches. And I'd love to explore that and find out, you know, how, how are you weaving this in? So Christy, I'm going to start with you because you have dual citizenship where you're a practitioner and a coach. How are you merging it? Where are you getting caught up in scope of practice? You know, how has it enlivened your practice? Yeah. So go for it. You know, I am so excited to have, have the ability to put those credentials behind my name and say that I have been through the course, you know, for FMCA. Um, it was an honor to work with Elise and Sandy from the very beginning uh, to be a part of her, the founding development team and to be on the advisory team. And, and after five to six years of watching the growth and the development happening out there in the world, it was the moment. And honestly, for us, the pandemic had some somewhat of that ability to kind of push us into the right environment to make that happen. So uh, during the pandemic, uh, both my husband and I, uh, who has 24-year history of health coaching, he's a nutritionist, he is an MMA retired pro and coach, and we own a gym and a clinic space together, we decided to do it together. And part of the reason that we opted to do that is we were surrounded by this team of coaches and personal trainers, and we were all sort of close in our language, but we were a little bit off, right? And as all of us on this panel know, functional medicine unites people. Right. Functional medicine brings a language together. Functional medicine brings an approach together. And so our entire team, uh, my office manager uh, was in the very first FMCA class. Um, so, you know, I have been dedicated to making sure that the people that are on my team that are touching and supporting my team have a level of familiarity of both functional medicine as well as the unique attributes that the coaching academy brings front and center. So for me to graduate during the pandemic, right while my entire practice was getting flipped and pivoted from an in-person practice to almost all telemedicine, Honestly, the timing was impeccable. You know, it was a very divine window for us. Uh, we graduated just recently here in March. And I have to say, the coursework for me as a physician, somebody who is passionate and absolutely loves the art of coaching, it challenged me in all the right ways, right? Having been a clinician for 23 years before my coaching exposure, you know, I still would have that default position to go back to doctor advice giver right? I'd have that hat on and I'd solve the problems and I'm going to dig deep into root cause medicine and I'm going to do my special labs and I'm going to focus on nutrition and I'm going to look at nutrigenomics and I'm going to use all these awesome tools, right? That set functional medicine ahead in so many ways. But I have to tell you, I was still struggling with the art of behavior change, you know, in my own practice, you know, and I would say even in my own life to some degree, you know, I would set goals for myself. And then honestly, I'm a mom. I have four kids. I'm doing distance learning. All of a sudden, I'm in eighth grade and fifth grade and third grade. And, you know, quite honestly, the skills that I was picking up during my FMCA experience, I was not only applying them in my telemed consults with my patients, I was applying those skills at home. I was applying those skills with my kids. I was applying those skills as a new elementary teacher, which most certainly was not something that I thought I was signing up for. So what I have to say about my journey, I have a long standing relationship with the entire evolutionary process of what's brought us up to today. FMCA and the learning journey that takes place there, it helps you walk the talk. It helps you as a practitioner really own your weaknesses, celebrate your strengths and pick and choose how to do a better job, really strengthening some of those areas in your lives and really leaning in and stepping forward. So for me, if I were going to summarize it, FMCA has really helped support my entire practice growth and development. It's helped us create a collaboration team unlike any I've known before this era, honestly. For me personally, 
It's helped motivate me. I made a goal and a promise to my partner, my buddy in my class, looking back now to last September. And it's almost a year. And I remember promising myself in my FMCA class that I'm going to get into my own gym and I'm going to start lifting weights and I'm going to do strength training for the very first time. So that by the time I got to this summer, I would feel good about how I felt, how I looked and my strength. And I have to tell you, I'm deadlifting my own weight. I'm doing things I never knew. And my coach held me accountable. I mean, my FMCA coach. Yeah, my husband coach was super helpful. But my FMCA coach was awesome. Every week she would check in on me. She would ping me with little messages. And I have to say, being on the receiving end of that level of coaching, it was transformational for me. So I have to say, in my practice, I'm living those benefits every day. I'm loving the opportunity to listen more. That's what I'm going to say. Functional medicine training taught me as a physician how to ask better questions. And I would say that FMCA, it actually taught me how to listen better. Christy, that that, that is a perfect ending and a segue to what I was going to say. So me and Christy have known each other forever. And so she's going through FMCA curriculum and she calls me on the phone and I'm driving to work and we're going back and forth and I'm talking about something. And instead of jumping in and adding to what I'm saying or imposing meaning or taking the conversation, she said, so how do you feel about that? What does that mean for you? And then she was totally present and still on the other end of the phone. I said, Christy, (laughs) this is awesome. She embodied coaching, not only with her coaching clients, but there was this spillover to your friendships. So uh, it it was beautiful. Thank thank you so much. More to say in a few. But uh, Leora, I want to hear about what you're doing. Group medical visits have become a very hot topic. Very few people know how to do it well. How are you rocking and rolling? Are you working with a collaborative MD? And how are these people transforming? Take it away. Uh, Thanks, Monique, and it's really lovely to be here and be with everybody. Um, I just have to echo you knowing Christy for a long time. It feels like we all know each other in some way way or form. So I'm just very grateful to um, to be in this space. You know, with with group visits, I think it's something that I organically fell into coming from my uh, nutraceutical background. I've always worked powerfully with groups and listening to Jim speak was very powerful for me because he mentioned the word community Um, He spoke about that sense of connection um, and that ability to take that person away from feeling that sense of loneliness. So um, I must be honest, I feel like I naturally fell into the group space. Um, It's not something that I had very clear intentions to do. I had left South Africa. You can hear I'm from, I'm living in London, but I'm from South Africa. And I I didn't even have full intentions to become a functional medicine health coach. I, I did this training because of my passion. Um, And then Jim spoke about your purpose. And isn't it beautiful how my passion has actually translated into my purpose. And I've I've realized that the ability to speak to people in groups allows the message to go further. Um, It allows people within the group to um, support one another in their transformation. Um, I've run a couple groups independently. I haven't aligned specifically with one particular MD um, at this moment in time. So I've just been running um, groups. It's been hard uh, to find people and to, you know, get people to sign up and do all of that. But it's, it's been an exciting journey and um, it's an ongoing process. And what I find most inspiring is that the people themselves are facilitating that active listening that Christy speaks about so beautifully. Because if somebody said to me, Leora, what do you do? And if I just told people I'm a listener, I don't think they'd pay me. (laughs) They're not going to want to pay a listener because people don't value that. You know, the traditional medical model, people valued going to their doctor, they'd get their prescription, right? They'd get their script with their medication and everything that they needed. But now it's a different way of of helping people because you're helping people to um, uncover their own intrinsic motivations, their own desires. Um, That's what I love seeing in the group because so many times I tend to sit back and I just watch transformation occurring right in front of me because people know what they need to do to support and help themselves. 
So Monique, that's been my experience of, of group coaching to this point. I'm actually running a group. It's a seven-week health and transformation program. And we running it three times a week. People seem to be held accountable more to, um, to one another within their conversation. So that, that's also something very powerful. You know, they don't find, um, they also tend to show up because they know the other teammates will think, oh, well, so-and-so is not going to see, they're going to see that I'm not there. So I, I better be there because I, I said I was going to be there. And um, it's dynamics like that that are incredibly encouraging. So uh, I hope that's what you're looking for. And anything else you'd like to know, Monique? Absolutely. Is it through insurance? Is it a medical group visit where you're taking people in and out? Or is it just uh, a wellness group that you're running as a coach? This is not through insurance. Um, here in the UK, we aren't there yet. Um, I am a registered um, practitioner with the UK Health Coaches Association. Um, but yeah, this will be something that people are actually investing in their own private healthcare model looking after themselves and really engaging how um, it was in South Africa in the same way, people um, and supporting their own growth and development. It has been beneficial because of the group model um, to be able to pay for a service that I may have to charge more for, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and um, that this was quite um, attractive for people. I mean, they're getting me and they're getting um, a yoga coach at the moment three times a week for crazy inexpensive um, rate. But for me, there's people feeling better. There's people that are working together in a team. Um, it's, it's exciting. And, you know, to be honest, um, in, in the group now that I'm running, there's seven people. Um, I like to have a sweet spot of between 10 to 15, but the seven people keep showing up. So we're on week three and uh, I can let you know what happens at the end of the seventh week. Absolutely. Uh, groups are so fabulous. Christy, Can I yes. speak to Leora for a minute? I have watched Leora grow in this field for 11 years. Um, my first trip to South Africa, I met Leora over a decade ago. And watching what FMCA has done to her professionally is something I didn't anticipate commenting on today, but it is so obvious. And, um, you know, Leora's background, you know, is in nutrition and motivation and education. And to be able to watch her take that background and leverage an entire new business model to take her entrepreneurial spirit and all of these new skills, you know, that she's gathered in FMCA and bring forward incredible ideas. I'm watching her orchestrate these incredible groups. She's doing this beautiful marketing work. She's on Clubhouse, activating, getting people excited. And I'm in conversations with Leora right now about having her come in and run some groups with me that I'd really love to launch in the fall because I'm learning how to pace myself. <laughs> I'm learning how to not take too many things on. And, you know, Leora is an advocate, not only for coaching, but self-care and the management of groups. And I just want to confirm exclamation point, which she says, I think every physician absolutely imperatively should have an FMCA coach on board, whether it's one-on-one -on -one client care or it's supporting the running of groups or it's out there answering those exploratory questions. When you are a physician and you have a coach standing next to you in harmony and unity in this way, they're an extension of your soul, truly. And we're all speaking this FMCA language. So, you know, I've watched her career explode and her fall into the space that is truly her. It's like watching her through FMCA. It's like she's grown into herself. Oh, that's oh. wonderful. Big, big tribute. So keep, keep doing the powerful work. And I'd love to hear more on the back end about what you're doing with your groups. Groups are so powerful. All of you out there who've never run them, have ne never been a part of them, they are transformational. Mm -hmm. So Mohammed, I want to hear from you. Weight loss, group weight loss, people getting happier, sleeping, losing weight. I'm on board. I want to sign up. <laughs> about what you're doing um... and how you're doing it. <sighs> Well, um, I'm originally a, um, a sport physical therapist by profession, and uh, I was working in the Middle East for about four years until the pandemic happened. And uh, I noticed a trend where um, my, well, the clients who were slightly overweight, their healing rate was really slow, like a, a very basic low back pain or a neck pain or a shoulder pain. It would just take uh, probably um, double the time um, um, comparison to a normal person. So when COVID hit and um, I graduated a month before that, FMCA, I thought, well, hang on a minute, this is the perfect time 
to expand things a little bit and then use Arabic and the knowledge that I've gained from functional medicine. And I was a believer anyway, when it comes to physical um, therapy, that it's not about the massage or the cupping, it's about holistic approach because the body is capable of healing itself anyway. So what FMCA equipped me with, all this information about nutrition, sleep, lifestyle, and it, just the list goes on. And um, it was amazing. Um, it was, it's, it's, it's definitely growth in, in progress because growing a business, it's a different side. It's, it's a completely different game. But um, you grow yourself, you learn new things, you meet different people, and then you get to help people from the globe. So I've got people from the Middle East. And that's why when I got asked, where do you ex exactly specialize? I'm like, I think you just say Middle East and North Africa. I'm just swimming all over the place. That Anyone who speaks Arabic and find me over the internet, they reach out, they ask, what is it that you're talking about? How am I going to lose so much weight in such a little time? Is this safe? Is this whatever? And when they read the testimonials, when they go through the way we do things, and then there is groups, there is Zoom meetings on a weekly basis. We have a private Facebook group for members. And then we have, um, um, I plug them to an app, obviously better, practice better, and everybody gets to communicate. And the whole, the whole, vibe is is different than what our people used to when they approach weight loss they go to a nutritionist just one to one um but the vibe is different anyway um and yeah it's it's been it's it's been really nice yeah. there's a, there's a lot of growth there's a lot of information and the the realm is is, is huge and I've been, I've been enjoying it that's amazing and you're doing it all remote your groups are all remote Right, right now, I'm in Europe. I traveled last week because as long as I have my laptop, my camera, and my mic, and a good internet connection, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful, Mohammed. And it sounds like you're having amazing results. Thank you so much. So I want to go around and I want to ask, starting with Christy, um, how, give us like one or two sentences for people out there listening to this that are thinking about joining and becoming FMCA coaches or coaches that have graduated, but haven't done anything with it. Give me a pearl. Give me some wisdom. What would you say to them? If they were oh, sitting the the moment, I love how we opened because this is the moment where people have really tuned in and realized that their healthcare is their responsibility, right? There is so much during the pandemic where people were failed by the healthcare system. And I think we all learned that your lifestyle, how you eat, your nutrient levels, some of your genetic predispositions, they really set the stage. And that's not something that typically the physician can help you with. That's the sweet spot for a coach. That's awesome. Leora, what would you, what would you pass along? What message? Um, I have to echo what um, Jim was saying earlier is something to learn because you may not know what the final destination is, um, whether or not you want to become a functional medicine health coach or what exactly will I do with it? Um, where will I fit in? Is this something that I could do as a full-time job? But if you put it into that category of something to learn, that's how I did it. When I did this course, I remember um, Dr. Christie and Dr. Mark Minaclesino were in Durban in South Africa. And they said to me, Leora, you're a lamplighter. You got to do this course. And I remember going back to my hotel room that night and realizing, I don't know, maybe I've got to do this course. And I did it because it was a passion. So if the passion is there, the purpose will be there too. So that's what I'd like to share. And that was four years ago. That was four years ago because the Facebook memory just popped up for me this week. Four years ago, we were having this conversation and look at where you are now. <laughs> there you go. Manifested it. <laughs> Manifested it. Mohammed, what do you want people to know? What do you want to share? What do you want to pass along? Oh, wow. Um, people are desperate. Uh, I mean, when I look at the English speaking, I see a lot of gaps. But when I look at other languages, oh boy, there's a lot of people are desperate for this information. People need help. People need a coach. Uh, people don't like being told what to do. They like to feel heard and they like to be guided and they like to be coached. So um, if you don't want to do it for the people, you, you know what, do it for yourself. And then your family are going to role model you because me and my wife did it on the same year. And then you see members of the family looking up to us. Hey guys, this is happening to me. What do I do? Mm -hmm. So trust me, if, when, once you do it, there's a lot of benefits that are just going to happen 
as as you move along and then the progress is is literally unknown just just keep moving forward thank you so much so i'm going to go around and i'm going to do it in the reverse order mohammed i'm going to start with you and just ask you in one or two sentences you know this is what i'm seeing in my practice kind of the reopening from covid and this may or may not be your experience but there's almost more anxiety, more trauma, more uncertainty as the world starts to open up with COVID. And I'm finding, you know, I'm running, starting to run more groups out of my office. And it's so helpful for people to be able to share and normalize the fact that they're all feeling this. It's not just business as usual. What are you experiencing as the world starts to open up and people start to step back in after COVID? What are you seeing? (sighs) Wow. Uh, well, trauma is definitely there. And one of the reasons why I like um, weight loss is because it's never about the actual weight itself. There's a lot of stuff that surfaces as that happens. And with COVID, this multiplied. Um, so what I like about the community, because it's so tight and everybody feels secure, they come up with things. And then when others hear it, they feel safe and secure. So they bring their other stuff up as well. And then you feel this healing energy in the space. Um and funny enough, it's healing for me and for them too. It's like the whole thing is just amazing. And um, it's a blessing overall. I, I love it. I love that you pointed out the bi- bi-directional nature of the healing that happens as, as the coach also gets healed as the facilitator. Yes. So that's, that's wonderful. And weight loss is never truly about just weight loss. Uh, Leora, one or two sentences. What are you noticing with your groups as the world opens up? Any, um, any vibe or not? Um, I don't think there's anything specific because the world's opening up, but I think the concept of it's not just me um, is the most powerful thing that I've seen in the groups is it's not this that I, I'm filled with illness, I'm filled with anxiety, I'm filled with trauma. It's that we all have a piece of one another and I see that in you and you see that in me and then there's that healing and that transformation that occurs. So it kind of lessens the intensity when there's that group. So that's what I see. Shared humanity, right? The shared Shared humanity humanity in the group. It's so powerful when everybody realizes they're not alone in some of these deep, dark fears. Thank you so much for highlighting that. Christy, you get the last word here, girl. What are you seeing? You know, I had such an interesting experience because we're inside of a gym and a clinic, right? And so during the pandemic, we had five months we were shut down. And so I would say my answer is what am I seeing as things are opening up? I'm really seeing that people are grateful. I'm seeing that people have a deep level of appreciation. Um, Every day I am literally washing and bathing my soul in this exciting energy that people have of just, they're getting to walk in the door and go to class. They're getting to be present. They're getting to be with each other. They're not wearing a mask. They can breathe without having to take those moments, right? Um, They're bringing their friends. You know, there was a phase where people didn't want new people in the gym. They didn't want new people that they were exposed to because they didn't know, right? Well, now they do. Now they do want to have those people on board. Now they're excited. They're expanding. They're opening. So I would say community has changed. Uh, I'm seeing some remarkable growth and development. Uh, we're seeing a swell of people referring and communicating. And I think that team aspect is really significant. People are ready to go. Thank you, Christy. Well, listen, panelists, this has been such a treat to have Christy, Leora, and Mohammed all share their diverse experiences and expertise and, and, and just tell all of you out there who are thinking about this, the possibility and the potential to you have when you graduate from FMCA and be part of the FMCA community and the larger part of the functional medicine community and the movement, really. So I'll hand it over to Sandy and let her finish. Wow. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your stories and your very inspiring words of wisdom. As you have heard, they are all making a huge difference in the world and doing it in their very unique ways. So thank you. This concludes our summer symposium. I want to thank everybody who's joined us. And thank you again, our inspirational speakers, Jim Quick, Moni Class, and our panel of graduates. Thank you.
Thank you.